and a Rubik comes out of all things. Like th this hero has felt like complete garbage for for at least the last maybe four months, four five months. I I see why GXR wants it though, right? Like you've got an Abaddon, great spell, pretty much. You just want a Photic Shield from Abaddon. If you mm. get a Photic Shield, you're happy. As well as that, you've got a Tidehunter now, so Ravage is always going to be a, a pretty big priority for this Rubik. And now an Earth Spirit comes out, which Ooh. is not so big of a priority for the Rubik, but you get my point. Now, the thing is, John, in terms of laning phase, Rubik doesn't feel very good. However, you you combo that with the Brewmaster. I can't remember what the ability is called. I think it's Drunken Haze plus Fade Bolt to ignite the, the Haze and... Uh, and, and make it a, a fiery thing, the, the DPS. Mm. It is quite a strong laning phase in that sense. Is yeah, it called Drunken Hate? Really... It's the other one. I'm, I'm forgetting the skill name. Cinderbrew? Cinderbrew, that's Cinderbrew. it. Cinderbrew. I, I don't know yeah. if it was renamed, because they, they reworked that spell a couple of times. They do, so they did. That. Yeah. It is Cinderbrew, but yeah, you are correct. Cinderbrew we, plus Fable. We have seen this a couple of times, right? Like before, when Brewmaster used to be a lot bigger, I want to say Pro Series 2 or 3 was when we really saw a lot more Brew. Yeah, uh, like a year ago, which is insane. <laughs> Think about that for a bit. Loot Bet Pro Series 7. It's been almost a year since the BTS Pro Series 1 came out. Jeez, that's a long time. Still, it is. Um, we, we saw this combo a ton. GXR, they go into the Konka, so that's the hold we're looking for. right? They want a way of tying these team fights. Konka versus Tide. It works in lore as well, in-game lore. Of course, these two heroes don't love each other, but they've got a great way to force out control force out team fights, improve their durability with a boat run buff as well, and kind of relieves the pressure on Rubik to steal big spells. You don't necessarily need a Ravage. It's always nice if you do get it. It's fairly simple to take, but the Konka kind of just ensures that you're still going to have some control down the line anyway. And that is likely our mid Konka here for GXR. Maybe a flex for support, but a hard five Konka is not something we've seen in a very long time. I think they're just going to have to put that down mid for Alacrity and just close out with a pause 5 uh, for their last pick. 496, still lacking a mid, still lacking a pause 1. Maybe they go for one of those pause 1s with Spell Munity. That could be really valuable against the Luna, against the Brew, against the Kunkka. A Jug or a Life Stealer could work out in that sense. The Jug is probably the safer pick if they want to lock that in for 496. Could be one way of going around and mitigating that magic damage here. They go with a Slark instead which is, I guess, one way to handle that durability from GXR. So because you're tankier, you're giving Slark more hits to get his uh, agi shift going on his hits, and the Brewmaster is also tanky here on the offlane, you can purge off the Cinder Brew, I suppose, if it does get nasty there. You do mm. run the risk of running too low on your HP, but that is a lane that the Slark can go back and forth with. Yeah, I mean, it certainly is. Like, it does well against the Brewmaster. There is certainly turn potential. I mean... You did talk about Dark Pacting off the Cinderbrew, and I do agree that might be uh, some positive to the Slark, but it could really go the other way around as well, because you can go for that Drunken Haze or, or the Drunken Brawler build-up, whatever they call it, uh, and it can be quite hard to actually man-fight the Brewmaster, even with that attribute shift, so or the attribute steal. So we'll see, we'll see how it all works out for them. One last ban-out for either team before we do get into these last picks. And what's becoming very evident for me, John, is I need to play a bit more Brewmaster. So it has been a very, very <laughs> long time. Hero just hasn't <laughs> felt good for an extremely long time, let me tell you. Yeah. Not a big fan yeah. of this item build up either. This Midas Aghanim Scepter doesn't feel very fun to me. Ember Spirit is going to be the uh, the last pick here from 496. A very aggressive style of draft. Do you like it, John? Does yep. it cover the bases you're looking for? I think it plays a lot better than their game one draft for sure. The timings are a lot better for a Slark compared to the Morph. Ooh. The Ember can be a lot more active. GXR closing out the Necrophos though. What are they doing with a Brewer to Kunkka? Uh -oh. and Brew. Okay, it's, it's a sport brewmaster. I didn't mm. I didn't want to be right in that, but apparently it's there. We'll see how much Paulson get can get out from his lane. Joe Cam on the Rubik is a little less strange, and Mizu and the Necrophos is more straightforward. At the least, they've got a way to chop down the Slark quickly. You can't really dispel the Reaper's Sight as well, so you can maybe save with the Abaddon Shield. I don't think it counts, actually, if you're below the kill threshold. So not many ways of saving yourself from that Reaper's Sight. For 496 aside, again, they've got that aggression to play with. I think you want to time yourself around Red's Tide. We have seen Red play that Tide uh, multiple times before in previous tournaments. We know he's a very solid tie to have on hand. He's even rocking the dad bot. He, he actually has the stomach 
with no head. No other part but the stomach is there. And you can still see it hanging out. Jeez. Well, I mean, John, the, the viewers can't see it right now. So, you know, maybe we just leave it till we get into the game. <laughs> yeah. But he certainly does have the, the good cosmetics, as we'd like to say, going on for the Tidehunter right now. Uh, still, GXR, 496, John. GXR, one game away from proceeding through the qualifiers. 496, they need to win this to force this to a game number three. Hard question for you, sir. Who came out with the better draft for game two? Hmm, I think it's really even. Um, I like the win condition of GXR a little bit more. I think the Luna is a much more stable way of sieging high ground compared to the Slark. The Slark's going to have to rely on really the Tide and the Ember to kind of help shove those waves out, help secure the siege onto the high ground, whereas for the Luna, it's much more straightforward. 496, their timings are a lot better than game one, again. But they've got to be able to play around even early ravages on one. Just look for those early kill opportunities with your lineup. You have to really enable Honk to start to snowball on this Ember. GXR does not have the best hold for an Ember Spirit. They've got X, but you can kind of time yourself around that X anyway. The lift is all right. It's not the biggest window to burst down an Ember. I guess you might just have to commit the Reaper Scythe from Izu. Prioritize the Ember in those fights just to ensure that he's not going to be able to run off. And that could be one way, but that is a very long cooldown on GXR side. A constant two-minute cooldown on the site. It's a lot of downtime, and that's something the Ember can also play around. So that's the key for 496. Play quick, buy some space out for port gas to get some farm, get Hong Hong rolling early on, and time yourselves around a Ravage to just group up, take a tower, find even just one kill with Ravage, and go from there. Absolutely. We'll see how it works out for them. Game one is now under... Oh, excuse me, game two Let's is now officially underway. Let's had a, a quick pause there for a reconnection. Nothing too serious, it seems. I've got to point out as well, John, like, we, we know 496 has always been like this with their drafts, but they do tend to draft very out of meta heroes. Like, this pause one Slark, you don't see it by any of the big teams in any region, really. Whereas you look at GXR, they go for the standard Luna pickup. And it's hard to go against that, because we've seen this, this hero and it's just tried and tested. Right, like, 496 with their Slark, it can be very good. But it is hard to keep up in terms of farm if you fall behind and they almost find an attempt there onto Joe Cam, but they weren't in range for the gush there for red. And now GXR, they might be able to force a team fight themselves. Red, he's going to show himself. It's not quite the target they want to get started on. They'd love a much squishier target. They aren't going to find one, so instead they'll go onto the tide. However, here comes a swarm. A 5v5 in the Radiant Triangle. But Paulson's one falling, or is it red? It looks like it is going to be red and in your dream. He's the one to get the first blood. He may die in the process, or maybe not as Ohio. is going to give him a double kill now on the Luna. An absolute disaster for the side of 496. As they keep going, Porkas, no. It'll be a Triple kill for in your dream! Enough! Get out of there! You've already given him one, just get out! They tried to they tried to trade, but they gave three kills to in your dream. Oh no! Not like this. That's not the trade they're looking for on the side of 496. They will probably get three bounties. The last bounties untouched, so they're going to be able to snag that away. Oh. That's a great start for GXR. Three kills at minute zero. That that reminds me of OB Neon games where they find four kills for the Keeper for Light. You know, it's just intent. And 496 overcommit. In your dream goes back to lane. He's got his rate band up. A little, a little bit more stats to play with. And Paulson. On that pause 5 Brewmaster, this is actually great. He can just run down red, force to harass red out, get the Thunderclap off for some good damage. Once the brew is up, it's going to be really annoying as well. And there's not much red can do. He can gush up the Brewmaster, but brew is fairly tanky and doesn't really care to get hit. It just buys so much more space for IYD. Uh, I'm still in shock that uh, In Your Dream's got a, a triple kill before the minute <laughs> mark. Like, he's, he starts with a magic wand and a wraith band already. Like, how hard is it going to be for Red to contest this? Probably really hard, considering he did not get any of that coal. Not to mention your Dream's going to hit level 2 faster. With the, with the ES tied, it's very, very tough to contest this lane. Let's have a look at the other lanes, though. Of course, mid lane, you've got Alacrity there with Hung Hung. I think this is going to be a Kunkka favorite lane. Well, we, we used to see this one quite a lot, and it doesn't feel like the laning matchup has really changed so much. 
Tidebringer is still one of those king abilities in the mid lane. It's just too hard to to really beat when you're in a 1v1. Yeah, it doesn't feel great. Tidebringer is really great harassment. The Flame Guard doesn't block that damage as well from Hung, so Lacticu just wins out every single time he gets the hits off. The Torrents have been pretty on point as well, and Lacticu should be able to get his bottle refill, it's no problem. Once he hits 6, this can sort of be alleviated for Hung. He can just kind of zip away with his spirits, but again, you have to time that around the eventual X from Lacticu, so... Very good start for Alacrity. Hung does have ways to compensate for that lane, but it's going to have to be a little bit careful in how far he pushes his Ember here. Well, Joe can maybe dead lift up. Ace, he tried to go for the pounce, but doesn't really latch. That BB, he's going to continue for the chase, but Mizu, he's going to heal him up and get the oh, body blocks block. off. Very, very nice indeed there from Mizu. But this top lane is proving to be rather challenging for the side of GXR, which is definitely great news for 496. This Ace is able to freely farm up on this Slark. And it doesn't feel like that's going to be getting slowed down anytime soon. Yeah, I think that's a good sign for 496. I just don't think the trade-off is worth it. Like, you're getting great farm on Slark, but the Luna's still having great farm as well. And I think in that sense, the Luna's going to be a better hero. You just farm a lot faster. You have good spikes to play with early Eclipse if you look to play aggressive. A Slark looks for a Diffusal, maybe Echo Saber, down the line to really be active. And once that's up, you can run, you can be aggressive, but if you are playing that way, you have oh, to Red get no. kills. Oh. No more. Not a dominating spree. Red, he's going to at least get Polison in your dream. Oh. He's going to find a fourth. <laughs> Three and a half minutes in. He's got over a kill per minute at the moment, this Luna. I, w I wish my pubs would do this, John. They, they sit there for 40 minutes farming the jungle. In your dream, he, he's getting active. Oh yeah, and that's that's actually really good. They drop the support first, so In Your Dream gets the full solo EXP. I don't mind that trade-off. You're not getting much by killing off a support brewmaster at this point in the game yet. So the benefit for In Your Dream is a lot bigger in getting solo. EXP. He's level four now, uh, four and a quarter in. So he's got basically a full level over red. If he hits five early, it's going to be even more painful in lane. With I'm assuming level three Lucent just going aggressive, and there's not much red can do. There's not much Ohio can do as well. Certainly not. But still, on the brighter side, top lane is still going okay. Like, Ace is still having a very nice time. He's matching the CS of the Luna. That BB is able to keep him safe, so things are very well. That being said, they're not able to really shut down Mizu as much anymore. In fact, that BB, he's going to be careful. Lift up Joe Cam. Helps Mizu secure a kill, and now they'll turn onto Porkast Ace. But he's going to be alright. He'll pounce away. They're even going to bring Ohio up to try and set up. Yeah. So, it's the only lane that 496 is really winning out, and you drop a kill. So it still feels good for GXR. Forcing a try lane here as well doesn't feel great for Ohio. Like, you do have some aggressive potential with a roll and shield, but committing onto a Necrophos for giving your Slark space, I don't, again, I don't think you're trading well here. I think the Loon is just getting so much more from this lane, and they're also going for a tri-lane bot now. Yeah, that they are, Red. He's gonna try and run. Alacrity's got the X back into the torrent. See you later. One They'll more. even give Alacrity a nice little tip. <laughs> Tide Hunter. Oh, I thought I they'd give it to In Your Dream just to build up that kill streak, but apparently they don't want to go all in. Alacrity is the better hero to give that kill to. Still saving up for his phase into Armlet. And a timely rotation from him. You're not quite seeing Hong getting that activity on the map. He does have his six up. He can play with a remnant. I don't really know if he has a great lane to go. Maybe top is probably your best bet again, but I, I just don't know how well worth it is to shut down a Necrophoist like this. Like, this is so much space GXR gets. They're not even committing Joe Cam there anymore. He's just focusing on stacks. Mizu, he's gonna try and get some damage. Meanwhile, Red is gonna die again. Alacrity, he just doesn't stop rotating down bot. And, and this is one of the things with the Conquer pickup, right? Like, once you hit that six mark, you want to get active. It's not a hero that wants to farm up the whole game anymore. It, it wants to play very, very active and aggressive. Alacrity, he knows how to play these heroes in that way. Top lane, looks like they are going to go for a dive. Mizu's in danger. He does have the ghost form up, but he needs some help to come in. They'll get the pounce off Hung. He's going to join it. In fact, Ohio's even here. They'll commit four heroes to be able to kill Mizu. But they will eventually get him. And Ace is the one to take the kill. Yeah, it's, 
It's a good kill because it leads to them invading that triangle. Hung gets a couple of stacks from the large camp, can't really deal with the ancients. So that does compensate, and they can go for that push on the tier 1. Bot is being shoved in though by GXR and Red. He's a level 4 tide. In your dream 6, he can't do much to stop this push. He's going to have to find a place to recover, and this is going to put a big dent in 496's plans. We talked about it. They need to play around with early ravages, look for kills with that spell early on, even on just one target. You can't do that when you don't have the spell up. You can't, John. Mid lane, bit of a group up. It's like that baby is just going to fill up the bottle of Hung Hung. Nothing too special happening in this mid lane. It seems like they want to try and set up on Alacrity. But he's a, a rather tough target. Chains there, roll forward, torrent throw from Alacrity. Just preemptively. And now the X back into the boat. Oh. The flame guard is going to block all the damage. They do at least get some off. It's very challenging to kill a Kunkka like that when he has Boat up. Unless you silence him, he's probably not going to die. Yeah, that's really just down to Alacrity getting a very good torrent to break off that initiation. They're still clumping here though, GXR. Polison, he's gone very far forward. They could go for the che- Oh no, he found a regen rune. Okay. Alright, he gets a regen rune. They'll, they'll cancel it in the end, but... You know, even, even Gaben smiling upon GXR today, apparently. Just everything going their way is Misu. Maybe this isn't going their way, but he does have the ghost form. He'll be fine. Ace really can't do much against the Necro right now, not by himself. No, he's still getting some really good farm though, but it is starting to lag behind. It goes back to that point where if you have even lanes between a Luna and a Slark, the Luna's still going to win later on. It's It just has better farming spikes. It has better power spikes right now. Ace still needs to go for that Echo Saber, still a ways off. That's not going to help him farm as well. He has to be active once that item's up, Radiance and his team has to be ready for that. Attack. They are smoked up here. Hung and Ohio are on the hunt. Who are they going to get, though? Dyer's That's my problem. Like It just feels like in every sense, they're just behind. Like, Hung's level 8, which is amazing and all, but you're still going to run into a Kunkka with, with bowed up. He's just farming Ancient Stacks right now. Looks like they want Mizu, so they're going to try, but he has that ghost form again. The roll is there. Silence as well, but here come the TPs trying to help out Mizu. Remnants used up. How much is this going to cost them? Hung, he used all his mobility. Oh no. He's going to die for it. It's not worth... Pos 2 Ember dying for a Pos 3 Necro. That was a level 8 Ember as well for the sake of a level 7 Necrophos. It's just not worth it. No, it's really not. And now that's going to lead to a bit of a push up top. That BB TP's in. They've got Heroes Clump around for the defense. Forecast, he might be able to get started. In your dream showing up. This could be a massive target. But 496, they're not feeling confident to go in. Perhaps assuming that his whole team's behind him. And Well, they're not entirely wrong. Half his team is there. Hung now going to TP up, chain down, does catch on two, aces around, there's your Eclipse flying out, so Ohio is going to get caught, but they found a trade with Joe Cam, and now Ace might be able to go for another, but the Reaper Ooh. Scythe comes in, it's not going to be enough though, big Ravage out, in fact never mind, it only connected on one, and they're looking to turn now as Alacrity, he has a double damage rune active, and they might just be able to take down the pause 3 of 496, and it looks like it's going to be no issue, they do get a nice miss kill, miss coil though, and that'll be enough. The Duke's out. GXR. It's going to be an unfavorable trade for them. 496. This time around, we'll be happy. That's a big win for 496. They just managed to hold off. They might still lose that TV, though. They yeah, borrowed time out, but it's not really going to help too much, I don't think. Lacrity's just patiently waiting. They have another X up in 5. You already see in your dreams, damage just with the right clicks are quite high. Is that BB? Yeah, he, he's certainly just dead. Here you go, Alacrity picks it up for himself. And they'll go straight off that top tier one tail. Yep, it's going to be an easy push to get done. 496 not in position to trade on the bot lane. As well, they can't really push out and, uh, all too well. In fact, their entire lineup lacks push. Grouping up mid now as well on GXR. Only Ohio to defend. They can easily just swing down here. Mizu is just keeping that creep wave alive. And there has to be a response for this, but they have no Ravage. They do have mobility on the Ember, but Hung has to refill first. That BB. 
He's going to be there to try and help out. He does not have the borrowed time, and instead they're going to go after it anyway. They want the Tidehunter. He's a tanky boy, though, so instead they'll turn back on that BB. They realize he has no ulti, and now they have the Cyclone up onto Red as the boat flies in. Perfect timing, and it looks like they found another. And there was no rabbit. Oh, no, Hung. No, no, no. He gets remnant it out, but it may not matter. He gets lifted as well, but he does get the remnant. It's a GXR. It's a two for nothing trade. Mid tier one tower is going to drop. There's nothing 496 can do about it. No. And they don't have Ravage anyway. It's still down for half a minute. And that's the big falling point for 496. They're strong when Ravage is up. They can kind of play around that. They can get good initiations, look for kills. But when it's down, they have to take it real slow. Like. When Ravage is gone, the pressure is on Hung to line up for kills and on Ohio to get the proper rolls off. They do manage to stall out long enough that Portcast does have the Echo Saber, but that still doesn't do much for his farm. This just enables him to fight a little bit better, so he has to fight. The issue is, who do you catch out? Like, if you jump the Necroforce, you're going to need multiple heroes to kill him through his Ghost Shroud. If you get the Kunkka, same story. If you find the Luna somehow, that probably is your best target, the Luna or the Rubik. Issue is... In your dreams, just very well placed on a map. He's so far away from the rest of the enemy team. There are no aggressive wards to spot that out. 496, they are smoked up, trying to hunt, but again, with no vision. This is a walk in the dark here for the side of 496. GXR are going to make their way up, to, up north. Red. He's got the Ravage, but you don't really want to pop it defensively right now if you're 496. You, you kind of need everything you can get. Ohio is going to TP up as well in preparation for the defense, but it looks like GXR, they're not going to bother with it. We're only 13 and a half minutes in, and well, they've got most of the map to farm themselves. I'm sure they're more than happy to just let their Luna keep hitting creeps. There's mid lane. And Alacrity just going to go ahead and X himself. He's being very safe. as top lane, Ohio. Nice kickback. They found Mizu. They got the silence, but no, he has a four staff. And he'll just TP out. That's a four hero rotation that amounts to nothing. And look at the side of GXR. They're going to find Hung. Oh, they even bait out the slider fist, but they missed the torrent. Nice pump fake on the torrent to bait out the slide, but in the end, it won't matter. Yeah, it's always a bit tight in trying to lock in the Ember just with Torrent X. Lots of ways to dodge. They are keeping Chase Paulson's pretty low here. Nah. He's got the split anyway in, things, in case things get dicey. 496, they're still losing that farm war here. 6k behind GXR. IYD just making great use of the space. Almost the same story from game one. 8.7k at 14 and a half minutes in. Port gas is 2.5, 2.6k behind. Not the best of news for the Slark. And that gap is just going to keep increasing. Port gas trying to rush the defusal. Again, all fighting items on the Slark. You don't really go for farming builds. And that just means as the farm goes on, the Luna's always going to win that war. That is true. Speaking of Luna, Porkas, he's going to see in your dream. It's a lot of damage being pumped out. It's going to be that much worse when, when in your dream does get the, uh, the Manta style up. That BB, going to get some wards down. Alacrity may have spotted him, and now he definitely does. Look at the Tidebringer hit. <laughs> takes over half his HP. It's mid lane. Mizu. He's going to be chased for a little bit by Hung, but Hung's not really going to commit all the way. Not underneath the tier 1 mid tower. You can't really go that far right now as Ace. He has been caught. Boat is going to fly in with the X out. He'll go for the Shadow Dance. Looks like he should be fine. Instead, they'll go on to that BB and man, the damage output. They're not even worried about the borrowed time. They'll heal him back up for his own sake and then bring him right back down to Earth. <laughs> That's a 7th kill of this Luna at the 16 minute mark, John. Yep, he's been around for 11 of those streaking kills as well, counting the assists. In Your Dream was just being efficient there, Mike. He wanted to hit the creep wave. He just went through that bar of time. They do manage to have enough time for Hong to come in. It's just the Ember. No one else is going to come in for the defense just yet. This is a bit risky for Hong. Yeah, they're literally ignoring him. Like, the Flame Guard's around. Now they're going to back off. These are all rotations that are amounting to nothing from 496. Like, we've seen this before. The last time around, it was a four-hero rotation. And they got nothing out of it. 
It's the exact same thing this time, except it's a three hero rotation. GXR, they're not leaving the jungle either. They're more than happy to stick around and kind of just taunt the side of 496. What do you do if you're 496? Are you just falling so far behind? Yeah, they... I, I, I feel like they haven't grouped around or tied them well. Maybe play with that Ravage. They keep trying to pressure out Mizu, but every time you commit onto the Necrophos, it's just space. Mizu doesn't mind. He knows how to play that Necrophos. You attract the enemy heroes, you get better farm on your paws one, on your paws two. Necrophos doesn't need too much, especially since you've got the hood and the four staff up anyway. That's enough to get the job done. They need to play around these spikes on 496. Like the Ravage is just sitting unused for a long time again. Just use that spell on one, then just go back to farming. At the least, that's something they should look to do. I, I kind of agree with you on that, John, but it's it just seems so tough, right? Like, even with the Ravage, I don't know if they have the damage. That, that's the problem. I just don't see them having the damage to do anything with it. I mean, sure, I mean, maybe if they find one target. Mm. Maybe. One is, one is more than zero. Like, at this point, you just take <laughs> what you can get. Try to build up from that. The Diffusal is almost up in Portgast. That could be a nice spike for the Slark, as long as he, again, with that Diffusal and Echo Saber up, the Slark has to be active. You're not farming with these items. Or if you are farming, you're not farming efficiently. So you have to be able to take fights once you have that full Diffusal up, and you have to win those fights, build up these Agi stacks on your Slark. Polis and he's just so confident to run into the die triangle. He's got the split. <laughs> uh, that's it. He just splits. Screw it. Ah. Uh, He'll turn on to Hung. Hung's got to be very careful as he does remnant away, but I can't say the same for that BB. Burn time's going to be there. Meanwhile, to the south, Alacrity is holding everyone else back as that BB is still just trying to survive, but he's not getting out. Ohio, he lands a nice magnetize, but doesn't amount to anything. Oh. A massive ravage, though. Four heroes stunned up. They do get Polison, but Ohio's down now into <laughs> Jokam, who's got the Burn time. They can't even get the Rubik. Still a 2 for one trade thus far. A buyback on that BB. Is they going to go after Mizu? He does have the Reaper Scythe up. A mage is committed. In fact, he doesn't need to. It's going to be a dieback on that BB. Joe Cam, he's going to spot out red for a second, but won't even bother. It just feels like there's no need to rush here if you are GXR. You can just play the slow game. Just take over the map. And if they come into you, again, Reaper Scythe is up for Mizu. Yeah, and there's no Ravage now. That was a good Ravage from Red, but the damage issue men you mentioned comes into play there. And they most of their damage is on Hong, and he has to be really cautious with where he TPs in. Oh, red, red, red. <laughs> Not like that, sir. Lift up. Reapers is going to be there, and they're going to have the damage. There's a tip in your dream. He knows it. He, he's wondering what the hell he was doing. Oh, the Courier as well. Yeah. In the middle of the lane. All the gold. Oh. 496, I and mean, they lose their tier 2, they're still trying to play tag. Portgas has that defusal, he just can't find the angle. Like, there's just so much control, so much damage output from GXR, and that the Slark is just not in position to really use these items to his advantage yet. And that's, again, the shortcoming of this POS 1 matchup. In your dream, doesn't want to fight, and he farms really well. Um, Portgas wants to fight, he can't fight all too well right now, and he can't farm all too well either so you're just falling behind on every metric for the slark maybe if they isolate one again just keep killing paulson or jokam or something maybe they could get paulson now he hasn't got split up for another seven seconds but tp no roll is there ohio he cancels it off and they've got the pounce one more second if he wanted to split but he won't have the time meanwhile mid lane mizu still very confidently pushing in this mid wave so Lacrity now is gonna get an x off they won't be able to land the torrent though. A nice dodge from Hung, and they might be able to go right back around onto that Necrophos now. That BB looking for the curse, but there's the ghost form. And now the four stuff away from the rollers in your dream is gonna show up with the XN on Ohio. But they'll commit all the way. Ravage up in five seconds. Red, he needs to buy a bit more time to get that Ravage off. In your dream, he's popped his own BKB. He needs to back though, or maybe he won't. He'll just keep going. Mizu moving forward, but doesn't have the Reaper Scythe. And now they'll have the Ravage if they wanna commit. 
made just me as Ohio a big magnetize. Ooh. Now the three man ravage. They can turn this one. Joe Kamamizu already down. Odds in your dream. He's got no BKB up. They should be able to take him down. They do. But can they get out of here now? Alacrity looking to clean up. Does kill off Hung. Mizu he bought back. And he does almost have the Reaper Scythe up. But he's not quite close enough as now Alacrity. He's been jumped. They don't want to feed a dieback like this. Reaper Scythe is out, but poor Gasti Ace. He can just keep getting to oh. work. A big torrent. Is it going to be enough? Right. Miz is just going to clean up. Ohio, he's had his roll blocked. They'll just keep up the chase. And he might just get this kill as the death falls. It'll just keep oh. chasing him down oh. and he gets a Mizu. triple. Mizu gets him eventually. I'd say 496, oh. they might still be happy with that team fight, John. They got a lot of kills. They got a dieback oh, a die back on a... No, they didn't get a dieback. It was Mizu no. who bought back. But they got a oh, 3k yeah. exchange. A lot of XP. I, I'd say you have to be happy if you're 496. You definitely are, but it's, it's not as clean as you'd want. Like, GXR still gets something out of it. Uh, they might have been a bit hasty with a BKB use on Inner Dream, a bit disjointed in how they initially started that fight, not respecting the Ravage of Red. And there is still power in 496 if they can get those initiations. But now, Ravage is down for a minute. That's a minute where GXR can look to play aggressive without worrying about that big team fight spell. I think that's what they should do. Just look to clump up. Roshan's up if they want to go for it. It's been ignored for the entirety of this game. So that's still Rosh number one. And maybe you could just go for that Aegis. Uh, go for the Aegis, look for the high ground next. Um, it gives you a security net for In Your Dream in case he does get caught out with a Ravage with no BKB. I think In Your Dream at this point, he is going for the Butterfly uh, for more damage and some durability with the Evasion. That's going to cause issues for a Slark. But I think he wants some lifesteal here. Um, he does have that a nice little Possessed Mask. Not quite enough. I think a Satanic's going to have to come out afterwards. Uh, for that. Actually, no, that was I was mousing over to Slark. Uh, he doesn't have lifesteal at all. So a satanic or even just a morbid mask after the butterfly should really help him sustain in those fights. Now that they've got the eggs up as well on the hung. 496, they have a pretty nice power spike here on their ember. You might feel like this is around the time where they want to start moving. That last team fight, it looked a lot more the even than we were power. expecting. They've got the ravage back up. In fact, they've got everything back up. It might be time to just kind of run at the side of GXR and see if you can get something done. Radiance middle tower Speaking of GXR, I mean, they're moving into that dire jungle again. They'll take the outpost. I think the longer you wait for this next fight, the harder it's going to be here for 496. Because even Mizu, he just picked up that full Aeon disc now. Just on the courier. He's leaving it in the tree line as well. He doesn't want to take it yet. No, never mind. He does. What have we here? Mid lane. In your dream. He's going to respond. Let's clear out the wave. As the rest. TP Radiance down with him. Joe Camp. He's going to look for a target. And he gets the aphotic shield. I guess it's just kind of just as good. Good saving spell, just having to dispel on hand. That's also saved 496 a couple of times there. They do manage to get a nice full pipe and a BKB on the Slark. So now, Portgas will have no issue standing in front of these fights, getting his damage off, having the safety net of the Shadow Dance and the BKB. It's going to be a massive boon. They will start to rush on here on GXR though. In Your Dream just goes in solo. There is a ward by the cliff. Watch that area, but they're not quite walking in there yet. So, 496 has to have the game sense to check, and that TV's here. That he is, he's gonna spot it out. They have not noticed that the Abaddon was there for a second, as there's no sentry on the ground, and now here comes their help. Ace, he's right in with the pounce. BKB popped, Ace, he needs the Shadow Dance. He'll get it off, just in the nick of time, but that's his defensive ability gone. Now that BB's gone, they're all jumping in. Ravage is there from Red, he's trying to save the day, but they'll just turn right back around on that Tidehunter and go after him. The big green watermelon is not gonna be together for so long as they just burst it oh. and now the stolen ravage joe cam he's <laughs> unable to catch anyone i believe he wanted hung but he does manage to to just kind of uh to use the remnant to get out and gxr i mean it, it kind of looked like it was gonna work john but then ace just pounces into the pit yeah 
Nah, they needed to wait. Red had to be up there. He was walking in with a Ravage. He had it ready. They just needed some patience there. Maybe you throw off your Abaddon first, have him die, then come in with a Ravage, clean up after. They could still win. And 496, just a bit too hasty there. Does cost them in the end. GXR, they've got that safety net now on the Luna. They know the BKB is available on Port Gas. They can play around that limitation. And they can maybe start thinking about the high ground with that Aegis up. They can. AK net worth lead just remains here for GXR. Mid lane. They see Alacrity, but he's going to X himself out again. Been very good in, in terms of just being able to continuously use that X defensively to push out this mid wave. So, for, so far, 496 is just kind of unable to catch him out. Meanwhile, looking at Red John, he is going that uh, that item build that I like. He did opt for the, the full pipe, but going into that Aghanim Scepter now is going to feel quite nice, but certainly doesn't feel like it's going to answer the issues that 496 ha is having. It might help a little bit, but uh, definitely doesn't feel like it's going to be enough. No, it, it at least helps them keep these waves shoved out. They've done a good job of cutting the mid, uh, keeping the bot shoved in. They are looking up top though, and this is where GXR is going to go for that push. No Ravage for half a minute. There's enough time for 496 to respond and stall this one out. I mean, they're pushing very fast though. Like, even at the, the 27 minute mark, in your dream, he does too much damage. He's got the Aegis up, he's almost got the Butterfly up. If he had the Butterfly, I don't think they could kill him. That BB is going to get torrented out. Rax is still going down. There's your backdoor protection now. But they already got the rain tracks. And they're not stopping. They're, they're sticking around. The creep wave has been split pushed by Hung Hung though. So he's not going to allow it. There's no more creeps to, to be found here for GXR. But I'd say you've still got to be pretty happy with the fact that you got the tier 3 and the rain tracks. has been killed. And now he's got the full butterfly up. So in your dream, he wants to fight. Huh? That BB? He's got the Glimmer Cape, but it's only going to be for so long. He tries to run with the Aphotic Shield, borrow time out, but they X him up. And he will come right back to the side of GXR as in your dream. We'll give the voice lines over. <laughs> and guess what? They've got creeps now. Buyback is there, that BB. He's going to try and fight with his team, but it's already looking so tough. Red, he needs a massive Ravage, and he gets in. Ace is there. They committed the Ravage out from this Rubik, I believe. You've still got the Ravage from Red. He has not committed it quite yet, as in your dream. He's still going for the fight onto Ace. And this is a very patient game from Red, but now he's been cycloned up. He can't get the Ravage. Lose the beam there. He's going to have to try and run now, but it's just... They, they can't find the opening. Oh boy. This is going to be tough. At least they hold a Ravage for now, but the Aegis is still up and running for a minute and a half. BKB is still up as well for IYD. You have limited oh, angles. Oh, what a quick lift up as well. Red again unable to get the Ravage off as the lift was there immediately. And now Ace, he goes to work with the Shadow Dance, but that's about a wear off. And it looks like this fight may have already kind of been lost here for 496. They're just struggling to get any form of damage. Oh. Big control there from Red though. That might turn around as in your dream. Is dropping low and will lose the Aegis. But he does have his BKB charge. They'll try and go after Mizu. He gets the Ghost Form just in time. Still trying to heal up. Now the Eclipse is there in your dream. He'll try to fight by himself. He's kind of surrounded though. Here comes Alacrity to try and help out as they've already found two. Fire back there from Mizu. He wants to rejoin the team fight. Alacrity now. Going for the X-Pack. Onto Hung, in fact. Never mind. They'll go after Red instead. They want that tied down. Glimmer Cape not going to save the day. That BB trying to run. Can he, though? Probably not. In fact, they'll just get in with Mizu. There shall be Shanko's buyback. Three down with our buyback. That is going to be at least two lanes of racks. Back to protection. It'll kick in for a few seconds, but the creeps are on the way. Yeah. They, they, they might even just pressure the tier 4 yeah. since it's a Luna. It doesn't take too long. 496, even with a tied buyback available, there's no Ravage. It's not going to be enough to stop him. You need to find some way with Hung here. Uh, I, I don't know how you do it, John. I don't, the Ancient is going to go down a bit too fast, I think. Red, he's going to try and make his way over Hung. He'll remnant his way through in your dream. He can still take the Ancient while hitting heroes. The Glaives is just that strong. Red, oh, Reaper Scythe. Oh, they found Hung. Now Red, he's just a sitting duck. He's trying, but he cannot get out of the GG. will be caught. 496.
get two owed here by GXR, who... I mean, I've got to tell you, John, they're looking very strong right now. I know we're only into our first series of the close qualifiers, but they made both these games look extremely easy. Yeah, they play it spectacularly well. This is GXR at their finest. And they even pull off the uh, support Brewmaster from Paulson, which we have seen him play before, but it always, it's always a treat when something left field comes out like that. 496, they had a, they had a better draft here in game two. Um, Portgas had a bit of a better time building into that Echo Saber defusal. It's just that they couldn't play aggressive. Even when the Echo Saber was up, they weren't hunting for these softer supports in the back line. They weren't going for those kills. They played a farming game against Aluna and uh, Kunkka, who farm much more efficiently across the map compared to the Slark. I mean, yeah. Hung Hung was trying to keep up, but it wasn't quite enough. And 496, well, they are knocked down. I believe that does mean they'll play in the lower bracket. They still have a chance to kind of build up towards those uh, group stages, but... It's a very awkward spot for 496 right now. Um, they're going to have to really play their hearts out in the lower bracket. GXR, they've got a nice, easier ride up. Uh, we'll have to see who their next opponents are, of course, in our next matchup. Absolutely. That is being uh, that is going to be underway in about 10 to 15 minutes, I believe. Uh, oh, we've... oh yeah, I have a correction in that, Mike. Um, I was what? told... We were on set time, not follow by. So we're not going to, we're not in a rolling start. I believe we will start at the scheduled time of 5 p.m. there, Mike. So you mean in about an hour and 10 minutes then? It looks like, yeah. That's the last word I got from okay. our admin friends. I'll mm -hmm. double check. I'll, I'll, I'll speak to a few people. I'll see if that is going to be indeed the case. But thank you for that, Jonathan. Uh, we are going to be having our next matchup coming up rather soon, and I believe it is going to be Team D up against OB Neon. So our oh. boy Ponlo's coming in, John. He's made it to the close Ponlo. qualifier. He's got a rather hard matchup against him for the first series. I mean, OB Neon, you mentioned it earlier. They just won two different tournaments at the same time oh, yes. on the same day. So it's a very hard matchup. A lot of people have been arguing that OB Neon should have been directly invited uh, to the tournament, and I've got to admit, I, I kind of agree uh, nevertheless, a very hard matchup. We'll see if Team D can do it. Uh, but we are going to have to wait, unfortunately, for a, a bit of a break. Uh, but it is MLP Dota and John X Fire. Oh, Mike, before go we on, go John. off, I've got to give a shout out to our sponsors. Lootbet, of course, 100% bonus on your deposit for new users. Up to 10,000 pesos for Southeast Asia, 100 US dollars or 100 euro with a promo code PRO. Click on Lootbet banner click on the loot.bet banner below or visit bts.gg slash lootbet and of course mate mate thank you to our sponsor mate 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 a natural energy drink is caffeine reimagined try mate mate today and get more day more night get your mate mate by clicking on the banner below with a discount code bts dota there you go thank you for that john we'll head off to that short break now well i say short break we're going to head off to a break and i'll try <laughs> to update you guys on exactly how long it's going to be it is MLP Dota and Dronex Fire. We'll see you all again very soon for our second series of the night.